Machu Picchu has been on our bucket list for the longest time and after this video you'll see why it should be on yours. You don't become part of the seven wonders of the world for no reason. Crazy thing is in the past few years there's been all sorts of inaccurate reports, rumours and even word at one stage that it was closed entirely to the public. So we knew on this month long South America trip we wanted to check it out for ourselves and share what we could find. Oh, careful! Oh man. We've come on a tour with G Adventures, links below, so it's stress free and we've got some heartwarming local knowledge from a Peruvian perspective. What does Machu Picchu mean to you? But we also learned about all sorts of crazy regulations, entry restrictions and pro tips that might surprise you. What might shock you is the fact that we've all been mispronouncing Machu Picchu and what it actually means when we say it wrong. <laughs> It was dark last night when we arrived. This morning we opened the window. Check this out! What? Look at it. But wait. There's more. Look at the scale of that. If that's the start, I can't wait to see what the rest looks like. Me too. I'm so excited! What's happening? You can see, she's busy. She's really busy. If we didn't have Hoover with us or uh, Edward down here, I don't know if we would be able to figure this out, if I'm honest. <laughs> We'd be lost without you, eh? <laughs> yeah. Way to rock and roll. We'd literally have no idea. <laughs> this town is a stunner, though. It is so beautiful. I just love that we came in last night and it was so dark, and then you get to see it this morning, right out like this with the fog. There's a lot going on. It's all good. We are about to catch the bus up to Machu Picchu. We've got like an allocated time slot. So, what is the time now? It must be just before 7am. Alright, we're in. You can see it's foggy, the weather conditions aren't that great. You good back there? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you were vlogging. Uh, really strict here, as in you can't bring in a tripod. No tripods, no big backpacks. So like no, no drones or anything. Like if it, No hamburgers, yeah, it's really weird on the sign. Um, super, super strict. You have to have your passport, a lot of people forget that. You can't buy tickets here. Yes, so, so make sure you get them down in the town before you get on the bus. Yeah, apparently people get on the bus pay for that bus, do what we showed this morning, arrive here and then go to see where's the ticket thing and at that point they only do, I can't remember the number, I think it's like 500 or 700 tickets per day but I'll correct myself on the screen here and that is it, like somebody from our group, long story but they will not do any more. It's our first kind of view, I won't show you down that way, the birds sound nice but nothing there just yet. Ed was just been telling me this is this is part of the original Inca Trail. So people that would just come from this direction, I can't see a couple behind us there, they would have just done the, what did you say, three days, four days? Four days. Four three days, nights. three nights, 45 kilometer walk, hike, let's not say walk, that's not fair. And this was like the original entrance into Machu Picchu. Just making our way up now. It's just crazy to think that this was sort of sitting here, um, not used, undiscovered for times. Only people that ever really visited were the farmers. I think it was 1911. Someone almost just rediscovered it and I just thought, this is pretty special. Maybe we should sort of investigate what's going on here. That's pretty. Look at it. I have no idea what it is yet. I hope we get a little bit more information so I can fill you in. But. I was just to be sharing, that was, just the, that was the original Inca Trail we were just walking on. 500 years old. The cobblestone-y rock, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Look at the llamas just free roaming, alpacas. Oh wow. So here's an interesting fact. Machu Picchu is actually the name of the mountain behind Dane. Down here, which is like what everyone comes to see. Like the main thing the you citadel, The city is like it kind of just got its name from the mountain. Peruvians live under duality. So because there's a big mountain here and then a little mountain there, it all kind of made sense. But yeah, Machu Picchu actually translates to old mountain. So we got an old mountain up here and we got a young mountain. Oh, you can't really see it. <laughs> <laughs> if we could just shift that yeah. cloud, there's a young mountain back there somewhere. That's the way it works, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a question for you. Oh. What does Machu Picchu mean to you? Like, what, what, does it, what does it mean to you as a Peruvian person? Ah, well, first of all, Machu Picchu means old mountain. For all the Peruvians, this is uh, very, very special. It represents what our civilization was and is. Mm. Yes, so we are really proud how human beings were able to live in different regions of the mountains and create such a big empire with great, great constructions. 
not only around the Andes, also in the coast of Peru in one of the driest deserts we have, and also in the jungle. Machu Picchu is the big example. Yeah. And it's amazing because of these civilizations uh, motivate the people to study more. Not only the Peruvians, also people from all over the world are interested in this uh, history, part yeah. of our, now it belongs to the humanity, yeah. how Homo sapiens were able to do such an amazing things. And today a lot of people believe that they had the uh, help of other uh, huge uh, outside civilizations but uh, mm. wow Machu Picchu is just wow when you come and you explore every single detail about this place you can see how the engineers uh, didn't do only a simple job like to put stones over stones really good engineers today they are studying and they they are scanning what is inside of Machu Picchu it's not only the difficult to cut uh, granite stones uh, yeah. it's also the construction under here in the jungle it rains so much that they built uh, canals under these grounds that goes through really? the different terraces and if you go to the very bottom you can see how all this water is going down to the river what like so, oh, so it's like, it's like an irrigation, irrigation system. system yes yes everywhere yes wow. it's not only the terrace under the terraces there are canals that takes the extra water because it rains so much in the jungle that uh, ordinary place the rain would make like uh, mud slides and would destroy it easily it in the kind of construction yeah. yeah 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 like they, uh, they, they were prepared for that yes love it if you see like in other incas construction next to that uh, the peruvian government they make the engineers today they make canals for the water and those canals because of the rain were destroyed mm. but the incas canal it exists today isn't it love amazing it. Yes. That's awesome, man. So we want to share some pretty crazy stats and facts about Machu Picchu, but first, a word from our main man, Edward. Welcome to one of the wonders of the world. Woo. On 2007, July 7, Machu Picchu became one of the wonders of the world. And there were two special things to consider this city into the wonders of the world. The first thing, the archaeology, and the second thing, the history. The archaeology, because this place, guys, is the only place that was never conquered by the Spanish. So the Spanish didn't destroy any construction right over here. And second thing about the history, there is a big myth about the history of Machu Picchu. Guys, there are thousand books that talks about the history of Machu Picchu, but now one of them is gonna say like, this is the real truth of Machu Picchu, because the Incas didn't leave any document talking about this place, okay? So it's believed Machu Picchu was built around 1450, and like Huber said, they were definitely advanced. Did you see that? In here, they're called the Rolling Stones. You can see them, and they were used to move the rocks. It's like a little mm -hmm. sister. And that's so clever. Yeah. Oh, there we go, yeah. I thought he was joking when he said the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah, he said the re <laughs> this is the real Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah. Tickets can sell out crazy fast, up to months in advance. So it's recommended if you're not on a tour, you should book about 40 days out. A common misconception is that Machu Picchu is at high altitude, but it's actually only at 2,445 metres above sea level. Cusco is 3,400. Randomly, you're not even allowed to take any photos while jumping. You'll be asked to delete the photo and risk being kicked out, and we don't really know why. Other than by bus, the only other way to enter is if you complete the Inca Trail, which has its own set of rules and regulations too. And probably even crazier, the entire world has been mispronouncing the name Machu Picchu. So we just found out that we've been saying Machu Picchu wrong this entire time because <laughs> Picchu in Quechua actually means penis, but uh, if you pronounce it Picchu, that actually means huh? mountain. So it should be said Machu Picchu. Not old. Not you live here. old, you know what. <laughs> We're just making our way down now, actually inside, so we can see some of the temples, see some of the structures. And it's a lot more intricate than you might think, the way that they've done it is, 
impressive. Not just the not just the channeling in terms of the irrigation we were talking about earlier, eh? The, yeah, also, the way the, the stones all fit together. Yeah, it's incredible. The way that it was kind of explained to us is that the stones are polished and brushed or whatever, and then they kind of fit together like an IKEA flat pack. If you've ever done that, and you know the dowel that goes in, and then you kind of connect the next piece. Mm. So they had all these like crazy systems, and it was, this was so long ago. How were they that and the smart? fact that this place withstood like the massive earthquake in the I think it was the I can't remember the exact date, remember but, but there was a massive one and it's it survived and, it's and obviously incredible storms and weather come through here and it's still sitting like this. It's yeah they were they were a lot smarter than what what we are. <laughs> yep. Oh, you're oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> Whoa! That was so close. <laughs> oh my day! Passing through. Oh, careful! Oh man! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh my! Kind of shocked here. We've just spotted something. One of the peaks. There are there are people like proper mountain goating up the side of what looks like a cliff face, and they that the view up there would must. That's probably got to be the best spot, surely. Mm, a lot of I think quads and glutes. Oh. <laughs> we would never get up there. I hope this has still been interesting for you. We we're just saying to each other. I hope um, it doesn't look, all look the same because when you're actually here and you're walking around, I feel like we're exploring 50 different areas. Everything seems to change from one you know one structure to the next. The site seems to change, and you get down here, and then you realise it's sort of bigger than you expected. There's different sides that you couldn't see from up top. Some of our crew actually stayed up the top. If you come here highly recommend come down and especially have some form of a guide because the info that we're getting from Edward is just it's invaluable to actually like to understand to really respect how this all came to be and some of these tales that it's, this video would be too long to share all of them but come here and find out for yourself I think sacrificing <laughs> So we've got the bus back into town. I just want to add some context so that people know this whole town is clearly connected by, by train. That's how people get in and out. Oh, this is where I'm going here. This is how people get in and out uh, and then take buses into Machu Picchu itself. So it kind of all sits around these train stations. Oh, hola. All sits around the train station. It's kind of chaotic, but in, in quite a fun way, actually. <laughs> We need this fuel for our next adventure because next time we're going on an enormous mission. Three buses, three boats, two countries, two random islands, a taxi, a minibus and 20 hours of driving. See you then!